Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and today I've got something new and really cool to show you guys. It's the Vruzen do-it-yourself battery building kit from vruzen.com and today I'm going to show you how to use it to build this 36 volt 17 and a half hour battery using uh, the Vruzen kit as well as LG MJ1 18650 cells. But you can use it to build any size battery you want. This is just the size I'm going to do in this tutorial. Now the nice thing about this kit is that you don't need a spot welder. Technically you don't even need a soldering iron unless you want to add a BMS later. The cool thing is that instead of using a spot welder to join these cells together, the kit comes with these plastic caps that are then bolted together as you can see here. So you don't need a spot welder, really the only tool you need is a uh, socket driver to turn these 55 millimeter nuts. So you can build basically anything you want, you know I built a rectangular pack here, but you can do triangles and you can do any size packs you want. Um, and it's just a really neat solution. Oh, one other thing, and this is important to say. Full disclosure, I've been a part of developing this project and I've joined on with the Vruzen team. So um, while this is going to be my honest review, it's not necessarily an unbiased review because I am a part of bringing this project to the marketplace. So keep that in mind. Um, if you want a totally unbiased review, then there are some other ones around YouTube. Go ahead and search for them. But um, I am a part of this project and so I, I really like it. So keep that in mind. Anyways, all right, now let's, let's look at the actual kit. Now the key to this system are these terminal caps. Now these are really ingenious. The way they work is they just slide right over the end of a cell and they hold on tight, pressing the contact up against the end of the cell. Now these caps can be combined just sort of like Lego blocks. You can put them together into stacks or modules of any size you need. You can go bigger and uh, even bigger. You, know, you can build these whatever size you need. It's better when you start out if you'll stick to about five or so in parallel. That way you can get used to the system, but um, theoretically you can build larger and larger. If you're going to build really big packs, it's probably better to build a few packs and wire them in parallel, but we'll get to that. Now let's look at how these caps work. Now the caps themselves use a dovetail system, where on two sides of the cap you have tails, and on the other two sides you have sockets. And that allows you to slide the caps together really easily, and then you can of course take them apart again as well. On the top of the caps, you've got a threaded post, and then on the inside, you've got these spring-loaded contacts that stay in contact with the batteries when you slide the cap on. Now, the way I like to start joining these caps together is by putting the tails in the top and the right side on each of these caps, so I orient them the exact same way, and then I just start sliding them together. And now when I orient all these caps in the same direction, it makes it much easier to combine these. So I'm just going to keep doing the same thing, tails in the top and right side. I'm going to make a whole bunch of these five cap blocks here. Eventually I'm going to wind up with 20 of these five cap blocks. And now that I've got those, I can start joining these. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put these tails all facing the same way. I'm just going to decide to put them all up. So you can see both of these blocks have the tails facing up. So now I can go ahead and snap these together. Now when you're doing uh, multiple caps at the same time, sometimes it takes a minute to line up all the little tails and sockets. Once you get them lined up, they just slide right in. And you get this nice, satisfying feeling. Um, so once you get that, I'm going to be making a 10S pack. So I'm just going to combine 10 of these 5 cap blocks together so I get a bigger block of 50 caps. Alright, so that gives me one side of my battery there, but uh, I'm going to need the other side as well. So let's get this out of the way and we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing to make the other side of our battery. And now that I've got both sides of my battery here, I can go ahead and flip one side over. That's going to become the bottom, and then my cells are just going to get sandwiched in between here. So I can go ahead and start adding my cells in here. I'm just going to push them in um, fairly firmly into the bottom here and make sure they seat down into those caps. Now the caps hold the cells really tight, so you've got to make sure you use a little bit of force and push them down in there so they're getting close to that spring. We'll compress them later though. And now for my next row of cells, notice how I'm putting these in upside down, right? So here you can see the bottom of the cell is actually facing up. And this is important. We want to make sure that every row of cells here alternates so that the top of one row is up and then the bottom of the next row is up. And that way we'll be able to make our series connections as we build our pack. Now I could continue on filling in all my cells just like this with alternating rows, but I'm actually going to show you a second method on how to build this pack that for me is just a little bit more convenient. Now for the second method, I'm going to go back to just my blocks of five caps here, and then I'm going to put all of my cells in. 
And now when I put the top on, I'm gonna pay attention to which way the tails are going. You can see on the bottom, my tails are facing to the left. So on the top, I'm gonna have these tails facing out to the right, opposite the way they are on the bottom. Basically, whichever way the tails go on one end, make sure the, the other side goes the opposite way. And now you can push these down, but I like to use this special tool called a block of wood because it just uh, makes it easier. It doesn't hurt your hands to you know, push the caps down. So you can use really anything here, a block of wood, um, or just something to push these down. You can also use some hand clamps, either directly on the caps themselves, or better yet, between a couple pieces of wood, just to help spread out the clamping force and give you a little more mechanical advantage. When you look from the side, you can see the cells should be going uh, about halfway through the cap here. If they're still a little high, you can go back and just sort of push down individual cells like this, or just, you know, push the whole thing down again. Um, but you want to make sure you use a good amount of force here and uh, get those, those caps all the way pushed down. Now the way that you'll check this to make sure that you're actually all the way there is use your voltmeter and measure on each side. You can see I'm getting about 3.5 or 3.6 volts on each of these battery cells, which shows me that I'm actually making contact with the terminal caps there. So you want to make sure you check and that you're going all the way through the terminal cap and that you don't have a gap there. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write positive and negative on the ends of these cells. Uh, it'd be a good idea to do this before you put the cells in there actually, um, just to make sure you don't get mixed up. Now that I've got all of my 10 groups together, I'm going to go ahead and flip the first group over so its negative side is up, and then the second group is going to have the positive side up. Now I can start connecting these by lining up the tails on the first group with the sockets on the next group. Uh, on the bottom side, and then on the top side, it's backwards because I put the, uh, the two blocks on in different directions. That way I can slip these two parallel groups together, just like this. Now, you notice I missed the first one here when I slid it on, the other four lined up. So I just gotta back this off and uh, just re-slide them together. Uh, when you do multiple caps like this together, sometimes it's a little bit trickier to line them all up at the same time, but uh, I have faith in you. There you go, you see I got it too. And then you just want to um, continue on making sure that uh, you line up each one of the caps and also that you've got the right alternating pattern between positive and negative in each group. And remember when you push them together, check the bottom as well. Make sure all the bottoms lined up just like the tops did. And uh, continue in this pattern. Remember I'm going negative, positive, negative, positive, alternating the top with each parallel group. And I'll just continue down the pack in the same way, sliding each parallel group together, always alternating positive, negative, until I get all of the parallel groups together into one big pack and remembering to check the bottoms as well. Now once you get the pack together, you're at the same spot where you would have been if you used method one. Now you just have to make sure you push all of these caps together and make sure they're all making good contact. I'm gonna go back and use my block of wood here and uh, I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm actually putting a good amount of force on here. And um, you know, if you don't have the upper body strength or you don't wanna do this method, you can always use a clamp or something else just to make sure that you squeeze these, uh, these terminal caps together to get a good connection. These squeeze clamps work pretty well. Um, another option are the uh, twist type clamps that have the actual uh, screw mechanisms will work for you here. And now before I start making my electrical connections, I'm just gonna label this first cell minus one so I can keep track of which end of the battery is which. And now I'll start laying my bus bars down over the threaded posts here. These are the bus bars that come with the kit and uh, you know this is real simple. Basically I'm just laying these things on top. And these are gonna be my parallel connections. I'm gonna do my first three groups here, and now I'm gonna make a series connection. Now I'm not doing this between the first set of cells, I'm doing it between the second and third set of cells. The first set of cells is going to be the negative terminal for the entire pack. So now I'll continue and I'll, I'll lay down my parallel connections and then my series connections for the entire pack, making sure that I'm skipping every other set of cells with the series connections, as you can see here. Now I'm just going to use my 5.5 millimeter nut driver from Vruzen.com, or you could use any 5.5 millimeter socket wrench, and tighten down these nuts. And then if we flip our battery over, we see that the other side of our battery is still not connected. So this is a good chance to do our uh, last check and make sure that we've got good conductivity between all of our contacts. So I'll measure on one side on any point on that parallel group. On the other side, I'm going to measure on each threaded post. Notice that these are not yet connected. So now I can see I'm getting about 3.59 volts on each cell. 
doesn't matter how many volts you're getting, it just it's important that you're getting some voltage measurement to show that you've actually got connectivity between these contacts. Now if I look at the side of the battery I've already connected, I can see that that first cell group is not connected in series to the second cell group. It's that second and third group that are connected in series. So that means that I'm going to connect the first cell group on this side to the second cell group because I have not connected them on the other side. That's how series wiring works. We want to make sure that we don't make the same connections on both sides of the batteries. So now I'm making that series connection here between those first two sets of cells, or the first two parallel groups. And then I'll just go and add my nuts on top of those bus bars, and I can tighten those down using my nut driver. Now I'm going to continue this pattern, checking on the bottom side of the battery to make sure I'm not redoing the connections I've already done there on the other side, because that would cause a short circuit. Now I need to make a series connection between the third and fourth set of cells. So I'm going to lay down my parallel groups here, and then I'm going to make this series connection. And again, I'm just going to use the nut driver and I'll tighten down the nuts on uh, each of these threaded posts. I'm going to continue along the battery doing the exact same thing as you can see here, skipping every other connection so the series connections are alternating as you can you see. You want to make sure you take your time here and you don't cause any short circuits. Just, you know, work slowly and carefully. Next, I'm going to use these wire clamps that come in the kit. You should have six of them in your kit. And uh, these are going to go on the two terminals of the battery, the negative and the positive terminals. And here I've got five cells, so I think I'll be able to fit two of these on each end. So I'm just going to remove the bus bars on the first terminal there and place them on top. And then here again on the second terminal and place them on top. And I can use these to add the discharge wires and then I'll add a BMS. Now the kit does come with these cable ties that will go around and cinch the pack together. You don't really need them. Uh, the terminal caps hold the cells really tight. It's actually a little tricky to pull them off even. But uh, you know this could just be a little extra insurance to make you feel better if you're a little worried about uh, vibration in your pack. But like I said, you don't really need them. And so at this point I could go ahead and add my charge and discharge wires to these wire clamps. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and add a BMS soon. I'm going to do that in the next video because this video is getting kind of long now. Uh, so I'm going to leave these empty for now. But that's the idea. You either add your charge discharge wires here, or you can go ahead and, and add a BMS like I'm going to do. Uh, now, if you have any more questions about these kits, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as best I can. Um, but you should also head to vruzen.com. There's a lot more information about these kits, uh, as well as links to where you can purchase them. There's a shipping warehouse in North America, as well as an international warehouse. So wherever you are, you should be able to get one of these kits. Uh, thanks for watching guys, and stick around for more videos in the future where I'm going to see what else we can do with these bruising kits.